Welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. Hi, I'm Mike Hoyer, HBM Applications Engineer, and in this video I'm going to provide an overview of the Genesis Perception Real-Time Formula Database. The Real-Time Formula Database option is not a perception option, instead it's an acquisition card or recorder option since the real-time math is performed on the card's DSP which is available on many of the more recent Genesis Data Acquisition cards. Now, once added, the option stays with the card. Now, to view if a card has the option installed, click on the card in the Hardware Navigator as seen in blue and view the results in the Properties Navigator as seen in red. Now, the results will either state licensed or unlicensed. To obtain the option, you'll first need to right-click on the card in the Hardware Navigator and select Generate Recorder ID File. Then select the card to be licensed. You'll need to email the file to support at usa.hbm.com so the process can begin to provide you with a license file. Now, once you receive the license file, you can add the option by right-clicking on the card in the Hardware Navigator and this time select Load Recorder Options to load the license file. In this example, I'm monitoring one signal which happens to be a sine wave from a function generator as seen at the top. Now the remaining signals displayed are calculated in real time including peak to peak, RMS, min, max, frequency, and THD. Now I'm also displaying the live numerical values of the same calculations on the right in a set of meters. Now I can vary the signal's amplitude and frequency and see the changes both on the waveforms and in the meters. Now I've also added some alarm points which cause the meters to display a yellow background with a red numeric when a threshold is exceeded. At the moment we're in the preview pause mode so I'll now click on stop and we'll see a recording I have previously made just a few moments ago. I've also created a table sheet showing the max, mean, and min results for each of the calculations on the right so I could easily replicate the layout in my report. Now let's take a look on how the calculations were created. Going to the settings sheet and clicking on formula database under the real-time calculators you can begin creating your own real-time formulas. Now calculations contain a name as seen here in the first column and a formula in the second column. Now when the storage is enabled with a check mark here in this column on the right, the name becomes available in the data sources navigator as a variable as seen here under active, RT formulas, and formula recorder. Now the name can be used as a parameter in another expression regardless of the physical order in the database. Now, if I were to type the at symbol, I can see a list of expressions that are available to use. In this example, the expressions we'll focus on are cycle-based, meaning the calculations performed for every cycle based on the input signal. Well, now just a quick overview on the calculations. We'll start at the top where we see recorder A channel A1, so that's the signal that we are collecting, and I've called that signal 1. I have a bunch of other declared variables here, which we'll point out in just a moment, but before we do any of these frequency, max, min, peak to peak, or RMS, THD functions, we first need to set up our cycle detect, and that's done using the first two expressions, starting with this first one here called hardware filter. and If you triple click on your expression you can actually see all the parameters for that function, an example as well as an explanation of the function. So this returns a filtered signal. Most signals are quite noisy and you want to make sure your cycle detect signal is a clean filtered signal. And in this case I used signal 1 of course as my input signal. I've used the filter type set to 1, which means it is a Bessel low pass, and I've used the frequency cutoff as 4000 Hz, and that results in a cycle source 1 variable. 
which I then use in this next expression called cycle detect, which returns a cycle source representing the level crossings in the input signal, which is what I end up using. As a result, the cycle detect one signal is used in all of my calculations below. So here my cycle detect expression is the cycle source one. It's also uh, containing a cycle number which I've set to one. You can, as you see, you can set that to 0 0.5, 2, 3, and up to a value of 50. So we're going to do every cycle in this case. Our detect level is set to zero and our hysteresis is set to 0.9. So this cycle detect result is then going to be used in all our calculations for frequency, max, min, peak to peak, RMS, THD, and again you can just triple click on any of these expressions to see the details for the parameters of that function. Now the question is how did I get those results in my report that we saw here on the right which are also set up here in my table sheet. I calculated those using the traditional post analysis formula database where I calculated the max, mean, and min for each of the results from the real-time formula database, the max, min, peak-to-peak, -peak, RMS, THD, and so on. Just a side note, if your real-time formula database expressions become more elaborate or numerous, you may find it easier creating most of your expressions in Excel, and then just copy and paste them back into Perception. Well, that wraps up our demonstration. However, please view many of our additional Perception demonstration from our FAQ video series. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call the HBM support team at 1-800-578-4260 or email support at usa.hbm.com.